our next guest um, is, uh, you know, I think it's very appropriate that we have him here. Um, he's a singer-songwriter, highly respected here. Um, he is also an activist, and uh, he's come to speak a little bit about his career, and uh, why don't you please give a warm welcome to Mr. Kucha Edwards. Is this working? It is. How are you doing today, sir? I'm good, Jeff. Um, we were talking before that um, the opportunity for, for, I suppose, you as singer-songwriters, musicians, people within the industry itself, and, and what, is, what is music and what can it do? And um, for me, for me, music uh, is, more, is more than just the audio and the sound that it, that it uh, resonates. It's, a, it's an opportunity for me to, obviously being this colour in this country is, uh, and, and people sort of try to, uh, to suggest it's not like that. But um, even sitting in this audience and only seeing one other black man person is, uh, is difficult. So in, in saying in, and introducing me, Jeff, I um, have to acknowledge, have to acknowledge that, that uh, me being not born of this country, Melbourne, I have to acknowledge that of the traditional owners of Melbourne, um, that of the Wurundjeri people, and their customs and their beliefs. Because if I don't do that, as an indigenous person of this country, I'm not adhering to laws and protocols that have been here not for 217 years, since Captain Cook sailed in in, this, in his great endeavour. I, I am a descendant of peoples of this country for over 100,000 years. And uh, so I have to acknowledge that of country. But um, I might as well go straight into my talk, huh? Yeah, I mean, I guess uh, I don't want to, uh, you know, assume knowledge necessarily mm -hmm. of the, some of the history. So if you want to try to synopsize that a little bit yeah. for everybody so they yeah. have an understanding of, yeah. you know, to understand, people, yeah, to understand yeah. why I have been, uh, I'm, I'm, I've got the opportunity today to talk in front of you, you have to, uh, I think you need to understand where I have come from. And um, I am a proud Mutti Mutti man, from, uh, not from this, this state, Victoria. I'm from New South Wales, born on the Murrumbidgee River. Um, which flows into the Murray, which the Murray flows into uh, uh, South Australia, uh, the uh, Coorong in South Australia. But um, before I actually start, I, um, I want to give you an understanding of, of uh, is there anybody willing to put their watch, or their wallet, or their phone in this box. Now. Can you do it? Are you willing to do it? But you're not getting them back. That's, that's the... Can I have it? You willing to put your phone in there? No, you can't get the numbers out of it. You're not, honestly, you're not going to get your phone back, or your wallet, or your, or your, uh... yeah, yeah. I'll own them, and I'll do what I please with them. My, your watch? Not many people are willing to do it, why? 
Can somebody answer me? Why are you not willing to hand over a watch, a phone, a wallet? Can somebody explain why? It belongs. Huh? It belongs. belongs to? To the individual. Okay. Did you hear that? Could you explain, could you give that answer again? Be belongs to the individual, the owner of the, of what is in here. The value of it. The value of a phone is what? 100 bucks. <laughs> That's why you want it back. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Well, that might be why I want it. <laughs> My mother and father had to hand over six children. Me being 18 months old. And we're worried about a watch or a, or a phone. How would that feel, guys? Because of politics and because I was born this, this colour in this country, my mother and father had to hand over six children. I was born in 1965. 1967 comes along, gives Indigenous people, Aboriginal people, the opportunity to become citizens finally in our own country that we've been here since time began. All because the white man says, OK, we'll let you become citizens in your own country. Do you know what? We were, we were part of the Flora and Fauna Act of Australia. So we were considered alongside trees, shrubs, animals and dirt. What a load of shit. And we get protective of a phone and a watch and a wallet. What are our most prized possessions? Are our children. And my mother and father had to hand over six. And it, and it burns to my core even today having to explain to, to visitors to this country, what is really happening in this country. Rips my friggin' heart out. But I do it so that the world understands what is really happening in this country. When I had the opportunity, Wolf called me, or I, I called him, and said, yep, I'll do it. Because for, for you to not only listen to me and get an understanding where my music's coming from and where it's going, it gives me the opportunity to tell the world the reality of what is happening. And that is why I, I jumped at the opportunity. But uh, 18 months old, put into a children's institution in the eastern suburbs of Melbourne, and there I lived for 11 years in a uh, dormitory sort of setting with a lot of other non-Indigenous kids, but um, having to do so. When you're forcibly removed from your mother and father, you are not only taken away from that setting, you are taken away from your traditional lands. You're taken away from what makes me Aboriginal is my knowledge of not only my lineage to my forefathers that have, like I've said, have been here. I am a direct descendant of, of two skeletons that were found in a place called Lake Mungo in New South Wales. 
Muchy, muchy people, my clan, are the southern caretakers of Lake Mungo. And they found two skeletons that were carbon dated, so, so actually carbon dated to over 60,000 years old. I am a direct descendant to those bones, to those people. I am so proud of that fact. Yet, yet in the white man's eyes, I am only 40 years old. How hypocritical can that be? Now, I saw my mother when I was six years old for the very first time. She came to the children's home where I was. And, and I was at primary school. And I had to run all the way home to this cottage. And I saw my mother and I didn't know who she was. It took her seven years to convince authorities that she has the right to have her children back. So I went to live with her. I lived with her from, for five years. And in that time, they were probably the hardest five years of my life. Your mother and father are supposed to know every characteristic that you have. They know what time you usually get up, Jeff, don't they? Your mother and father. Mm -hmm. Or when you're, when you're living with them. They know what you love to eat, what you don't love to eat. Who your friends are, who your enemies are. My mother knew nothing. I don't... People would look at me and suggest, Kutcher, you are Aboriginal, why don't you speak in native tongue? Because Aboriginal people were denied to speak it. Our own language. Who, who, who's of... of uh, who speaks... Uh, language other than English here. That's great, man. Only language I know is English. The worst tongue ever known to man, English. George Bush speaks English. John Howard, the idiot, speaks English. But I went to live with my mother, and uh, they were hard. I came down to Melbourne in 1985, and I went to a school not, not, not much different than this, but it was a school that taught us, taught us not only about uh, how to become a nurse, so I'm a qualified nurse, but it taught us the politics of what makes an Aboriginal an, an Aboriginal. And once I found out the policies of why I was put into a children's home, I saw red. Ironically, Red Bull is the sponsor of this school. But uh, I saw red and I turned on society itself. But I started abusing from within, internally. And I, I started delving into... into heavy shit, drugs and, and alcohol, and, and rebelling against society itself. This all came to a head eight years ago. I had a heart attack, and, uh, and I, it was a scare. It was a scare for me. But I, music, I suppose, has, has soothed the beast inside, Kutcher Edwards. And along, along with friends of mine who, who uh, are well-known, Paul Kelly, did you... Paul Kelly came to the school two weeks ago. Paul Kelly is a, is a very dear friend of mine. Paul Kelly actually produced this album here, Kuwinda. Kuwinda was the children's home that I was in. And I wanted to name it Kuwinda for that fact to let people know and start debate. Why did you name it Kawinda? Well, well, Kawinda was the children's home. Oh, I didn't know you were in a children's home. And that starts debate. Um, just um, when you w went to the children's home, and this being the government policy to remove the Aboriginal children from the families, 
Mm. And you went to an integrated yeah. children's home. What, yeah. was the, what, what was that like amongst the children? Like what I, was, yeah, what was, I, like, lived, I lived in, a, in Kawinda, the cottage itself. There was a, uh, um, about 10, 10 different cottages, uh, orphans, I suppose. And we got told when we were, we were kids that your mother and father are dead and this and that, and, and they talk shit. They, talk, they, they deny you the truth for their own gain, for their own, for their own, yeah. Did you sense um, even like at that age, were, you were all orphans, mm. quote unquote orphans, but um, I guess amongst, there, was, there were white orphans there as well. Yeah. Did you yeah. sense like that there had any sort of acknowledgement of you you're living, different, you're, you living, different. you're living for the day, for the moment. You, right. don't, you don't understand that this is all a politically motivated uh, policy. And it is proven to this day that Australia had, had two policies in act. In, uh, and, and, and to be honest, South Africa adopted policies from here, from Australia. Australia had policies in the, after the first, Second World War, the white Australia policy. No African or, or Asian was to uh, immigrate during that time to Australia. And uh, there was also the white Australia policy and the assimilation policy where uh, Aboriginal children were forcibly removed because of their, their um, the interbreeding, I suppose. Now, if there's an overseer at, at one of the missions who has his way with any woman he likes, in the way that he likes, well then, of course, there are going to be children of mixed colour. Mm -hmm. So them children were forcibly removed. And my mother and father are as black as me. But because of the, the, the policies at the time, they, they forcibly removed children, children that they thought weren't being looked after. But used it as a as a tool to do what they wanted. Yeah. So your so your uh, sort of awakening as far as what had happened to you came when your your mother found you, correct? My mother found me, yeah. When I was when I was uh, six years old, first saw me when I was six, and then I went to live with her when I was thirteen. But for me music to be honest, I was I was in a choir at primary school. Um, and, and I loved, I loved singing in a choir. To be honest, I fell into music. I actually, um, I would always, every time I got drunk, every time I got shit-faced, I'd, um, I'd be singing. And people would say, Kutcher, why don't you start a band? So I started singing in this band called Wat Balimba. Wat Balimba is a uh, uh, Eastern, uh, state uh, down Gippsland way, a Kurnai, Gunai word for uh, an Aboriginal word for dance. What Balimba was the band name, and I, I started performing in this this Aboriginal band, singing English, but uh, singing about the Aboriginal struggle. What, what sort of style of music would you describe that as? It was. Uh, I suppose rock, yeah. rock music. But uh, there was about 11 men in this band, but 11 friggin' egos too. So we were always, we were always, always arguing the point. And um, I'm somewhat of a lyricist who, who likes to take control of, of uh, what we're going to sing about. So that band fell in the arse and and um, didn't last for very long. And then I um, had a few experiences uh, in, in um, I had a band called Blackfire, and uh, Blackfire was, was a band that sung about 
uh, the struggle of Indigenous peoples. And that's where the activism started, started to come. And, and um, we, were write, we were writing about, um, um, you know, give us back our land. And, and um, anybody heard of a band called No Fixed Address? You heard of No Fixed? No Fixed Address was a very famous band here in Australia, uh, a guy named Bart Willoughby. And Bart Willoughby was, was a drummer. And uh, he, his band, No Fixed Address, was, the, I suppose, the first band to put the foot in the door, not only put the foot in the door, but to kick the friggin' door down and say, we're not taking it anymore. We're going to stand up for... And it was a, it was a, it was a move towards, um, yeah, using using music as this activist, active, act, activist tool, mm -hmm. and um, it was, it was. But the very first, actually, the very first concert that I ever went to, I, I wasn't much of a person for for concerts. I um, went and saw Robert Cray at a at a place called Festival Hall in East Melbourne. Blues guitarist. Blues guitarist. Robert, American blues guitarist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A uh, strong persuader tour, and he, his music just kicked me in the face. And uh, I went home and writ my very first song. It was a blues song called uh, "Roll with the Rhythm." I haven't actually got it here today, but um, I went home and writ "Roll with the Rhythm." The very first. I remember the very first poem. Uh, that I writ. I was in um, secondary school, in high school, and humanities teacher says, Kutcher, um, can you write a poem? So I writ this poem, and I look back now at this poem. Everybody looks at, at life in, in hindsight, and I look at this poem and I think it actually is explaining. I was uh, 13 years old. And it goes, trickling down the waterfall, freely one by one, forming into clouds of spray glistening in the sun. Crashing to disaster, my water drop is done. Left the short life of loneliness and gathered back as one. And I sort of place myself as that one drop. Um, being with my family, separated, but then in... in uh, in hindsight, coming back and and uh, I'm one of twelve kids, by the way. So ninth, I'm ninth in line. But um, you know, I lost I lost a brother last year to alcoholism, and uh, he was very close to me in 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 the children's home, and and uh, you know, we look at look at we look at people. All of us. We look at we look at suicide as being this quick answer to a to a problem that's been pestering us for I suppose forever. But I look at alcoholism as the same thing. It's a prolonged prolonged approach to the same situation. When did um well I guess um I'm curious to know what um you said Robert Cray was your first concert, but yeah. previous to that, I'm sure you'd heard music. I heard on the radio. Yeah. Did you? Did you? I, you know, I, I, yeah. I, I remember as a kid listening to to this beautiful, soulful sound of Karen Carpenter, and Karen Carpenter had you know, obviously we all we've all heard her beautiful tone and her beautiful. The the lyrics were a bit weird for me, but um, that's Richards. I suppose his doing, but she had this great, this great tone. But you'll hear hear when I when I sing um, the 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 resonant to me. It's, it's and and songwriting for me is this. I was explaining to uh, Jeff before that now now as a, as a I suppose as a songwriter and a lyricist, I go into uh, juvenile justice centres. Uh, jails, schools, and talk about 
uh, I suppose, my experiences and my experiences with songwriting. And uh, I will, are we ready to? Yeah, do you want to play? I'll a play a song. Little, I'll play a little song. piece of yeah. something? Yeah. This song I... Uh, well, firstly, what is this device here you have? Yeah, ever You're seen like one of those? Technical people here, so, you know. Who has ever seen one of those? <laughs> Up the back? What is it? <laughs> yeah. It's called an Omnicord. It's, uh, it must be a, a uh, well, it's made by Suzuki. So it's um, obviously from, from either Korea or Japan. But um, this, this was bought by a friend of mine um, nearly six years ago. My mate and, and brother, very close friend of mine, Paul Hester, um, played for Crowded House and uh, last year um, took his life. When I, and we don't know what for, but that is, that is up to him. Uh, I had a lot, of, um, a lot of media trying to chase me and trying to get me to say what I wanted to say about Paul, but what I had to say about Paul is between me and Paul at the time. But he, he, he was a great supporter of not only me as an individual, but me as an Indigenous person. And uh, he bought me this for, for my uh, birthday about seven years ago. And I writ this actual song not on this uh, instrument, but an instrument that, that I borrowed off him for about six months. And he said, come around, Kutcher, it's your birthday tomorrow. This is in a couple of days. And we'll put on a barbie for you. So I went around there and I said, Hesse, I writ you this song. And I, and I played, played this, this song. But um, in, in talking about, you know, people who, who have passed, you know, um, they're always with us and I conversate. I conversate as if, they're, as if he was sitting right here and he is. He's, he's poking me in the ribs as we speak. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, my brothers, my brother who passed last September and my mother, I lost my mother in June this year, who uh, is finally, is finally at peace. She doesn't have to argue with, with bureaucrats or, or people who don't understand anymore. But um, I just flew back yesterday. I was up in um, the north of the state uh, talking and, and writing songs with with students uh, who are going through their own problems at the moment, you know, with uh, people who have passed uh, in their school. Uh, so you want to uh, explain a little bit about that, as far as what you what you recently did, yeah, that, this little yeah. trip that you made, and yeah. what the I, purpose of that was, and what the circumstances were. Yeah, I um I was asked by a niece of mine the most stupidest question. Is, is the, the question you don't ask. And, uh, but my niece, she said, Uncle Kutcher, can you come up to my school? And this was when the Commonwealth Games was happening here in Melbourne, or as we term them, the Stolen Wealth Games. But um, she came and saw me at a show, and she said, Uncle Kutcher, can you come up to my school? And I said, why, what, you know? And I said, as soon as she said it, I said, yeah, you just organise it and I'll come up. But uh, at the start of the year, at the start of the year, there was a, uh, a freak accident up in a car accident where a car skittled close to 15 children and killed about eight of them. And the uh, car driver drove off and... and uh, 
but he got apprehended. And a lot of the kids up there are still trying to come to terms with that. And um, so I went up to the, to the senior school and in the last couple of days and be, have been writing a song. Uh, not, not so much to, uh, to write about that situation, but for them to, to uh, have the impetus, have the, have the, the, to start the ball rolling. You know, I was explaining to Jeff and, and Wolf that, you know, I like using uh, um, analogies and, and, and sayings, but a marathon starts with one step. And um, if they can learn how to express themselves in, in, in either songwriting rather than going down to the park, getting somebody else to buy them a bottle of whatever and drinking themselves to oblivion but but talking with somebody and and um and and expressing it in that way is more is more powerful than the trip that they might have on that bottle of alcohol or or that chuff so you know that's that's i suppose what i do i, I go to you know go to jails and sit with, you know, supposed bad people. But sometimes a, a pat on the back is, is again, more powerful than a, than a uh, six-month term in a lockup. you know. So, you know, I've, I've slept in gutters. I've, I've seen the other side, I suppose. I've, I've been to hell and back and... and, and close to death is is fairly scary and and it and that was that was 8 years ago mm -hmm. and i haven't touched one drop one smoke one snort in 8 years as soon as i came out of that hospital i um that was it for me mm -hmm. my son was 9 my son was 9 when it happened and uh, he turns 18 in uh, not this Saturday, but Saturday week. Mm. So, and I didn't want him to go through the same thing that I had gone through with my father. So I said, I will not only try and change my life, but any, anybody that, that uh, has the opportunity. And that's what life is all about, is, is about opportunity. Um, you, talk, you mentioned uh, with, with, with Black Fire and being part of a movement as far as, you know... Uh, politics. Politics or addressing the messages mm. in your music. Yeah. Did you take inspiration from protest music or activist yeah. music um, from, from other countries, from, yeah. from, from here? What sort of stuff, you know, inspired you? Well, I, with Blackfire, I got the opportunity to, to travel to China three times. I got to travel to uh, Taiwan, uh, Mexico, um, Japan, um, and and to to travel the world and not have to pay a cent to do it was was great on on that behalf. But just the opportunity to to you know I remember going to China the very first time and going to uh, Guangzhou, and um, we would walk down the street. We'd walk down the street and and people would just stop and, and w walk over and want to touch, touch the skin. Because they'd never seen... Never seen a person of <laughs> my, my obvious stature, but my colour as well. And, and the opportunity I had there was, was amazing. But um, in regards to politics itself, you know, we have been... Non-Indigenous people in this country would say, Kuchi, you talk a hell of a lot about politics. But the reality is that I was put into this situation. I was... I was uh, you back a dog up into a corner with a stick and prodded him all the time, he's bound to bite. He's bound to get aggressive and, and um, want to attack. 
but I find that if, if, I, can, if I can do this sort of, uh, if I can debate the situation, you know, we have, we have uh, journalists in certain papers in Melbourne here who are dead set racist, but they're, they're, they need to, you know, and their knowledge of Aboriginal people is that, you know, they went to school with one back when they were in primary school, you know. If you want to know about Indigenous issues, come and talk to the horse. Don't talk to the jockey. Come and sit with an Aboriginal person and you'll get the real deal. Don't look at it, don't, don't think because you watched Rabbit Proof Fence that you know what I am talking about. And, and you know, listen and read it in a paper. Ah, oh, is that what's going on? Come and talk to the horse and you will understand where we are coming from. And, that, and that's, that's the problem, you know. If you don't know, how to, don't know how to fix up the wiring in your house, go and see an electrician to do it, you know. How, just how segregated do you think the society is? Here? Yeah, still, because, you know, there's a history of, like, moving Aboriginal people to settlements. Yeah. Um, still a long way to go. It's a hell of a long way to go. Um, they would rather sweep all of us under the carpet. And I'm talking about, you know, the, 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 the person in the street gets their knowledge from what I was just talking about, gets their understanding from journalists or from the, the, the TV or from a movie or they don't really, you know, I go to a lot of schools, to a lot of, a lot of businesses to talk about cultural immersion and, and how to deal with indigenous issues, but they, they are still trying to fix, they are trying to fix the problem, rather than coming to us and saying, how can we fix this problem? They think they know, and they don't. Um, just, um, I've, just in the brief amount of research that I've done, I've seen it written that Part of the issue was that um, governments will claim that there is no central authority, or there wasn't at a certain point, um, for Aboriginal people. There are, there is, are, that a, is that a legitimate sort of claim, or is that, you know? Well, well there, were, there were over 500 nations within Australia itself before BC, before Cook. So, to, to suggest now that there is multiculturalism in Australia is, is, is a load of bullshit. We had all different uh, laws within each, each clan, with each tribe. But um, uh, two years ago, two years ago, they had a central, central organisation called ATSIC, Australian uh, and Torres Strait Islander Commission, which, which, uh, which was a central body, a central organisation that had representatives from each area, I suppose, each, each state, each region within that state that represented Aboriginal people. But that form, that form of, um, I suppose, law, that form of, of body is not the, 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 that's the Westminster way of, of, uh, of, of politics, I suppose. The old way was, was elders would decide, sit in council and, uh, and decide what would happen. Mm -hmm. A lot of that law, that just law, is, is being lost because, you know, our elders are passing it at, uh, you know, 50, 60 years old. Mm -hmm. So our, in reality, I'm 40, so I'm getting close to, to you know, that, that status. Now, now to, to call me an elder would be ridiculous, really. But that's, that's the reality now. I just want to... Uh, Any questions, guys? Yeah, I just want guys? to pause just to make sure if anybody has anything they want to ask at this point. Yeah. How you doing? Give that one. Can we get the mic uh, in the audience up. Yeah. One 
Hold on. There it is. How you doing? Good eye. Um, I just had a, a small question. I've um, traveled to a few third world countries and um, a lot of war torn countries, specifically Sudan, where my family's from. And I noticed that the youth, um, people who've been, you know, oppressed, the kids attach themselves to uh, to hip hop. And like I would go through the streets there and see kids who were fighting in the Civil War and they'd be listening to songs from Tupac as inspiration to them. I want to know, do Aboriginal youth, uh, do they listen to hip hop or what kind of um, views do they get from it? They're into it too here. Um, I have a friend who's from uh, the States. His name's Wiley J. Miller. And he's from, uh, I don't know where he's from, but every time, uh, well, Snoop came over here just recently. And uh, Ja Rule, um, I think Nelly was here. And, and he, he manages, I don't know how he does it, but he gets in there and he, he gets tickets and, and, and a lot of our kids have the opportunity to go and see these people. But they're dressing, dressing that way and, and, and I, don't, I don't deny, you know, them the right, but um, as, as a singer-songwriter myself, you know, I, I would prefer that they, they attach themselves to... to songwriters from here and, and but that's what's happening all around the world mm -hmm. and 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 you can't deny if, if they're if they're getting into music because of Tupac and, and and so forth you know it's better them do that than going around smashing heads you know what I mean well, Blackfire was uh, recording at what period in the, in the uh, 80 83 to 89. Right. 89. So did, I'm, I'm curious, I mean, that's actually very fertile time in American hip hop as far as activism and conscious, mm. you know, musical content. Did that have any sort of, uh, you know, bearing on any of the stuff that you did? Mm. Or did, did no. you see it, you know, did it get over here and into the communities? It, no, was, no, no. We, we, we were more into rock and, and, well, how, how long's hip hop been going for? What, what On records say? since yeah. 1979. Yeah. Well, it didn't get over here till probably, you know, mid or early 90s. On a widespread level, you mean? Yeah, yeah. But they're dressing, they're, you know, that 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 uh, tracksuit and all, you know. And, and I sort of look at look at our kids and think, you know. It's, it's, what's his name, um, Ali G, you know what I mean, and, mm -hmm. uh -huh. but um, I don't know, it, it's, it's a shame being uh, an indigenous person in this country and, and, and our people trying to mimic something from the States, do you know what right. I mean? It, it's well, it's you... hard to deal with, I'm getting to an age where, right. you know. Well, I mean, you know, you took inspiration from Robert Cray, Mm. You know, it's probably a similar, similar situation for them, mm. taking inspiration from mm. artists from the States, you know. We're all influenced by the States, brother. <laughs> yeah. um, anybody else have anything they want to interject at this point? Yeah. It's a guitar, fellow guitarist. Yeah. Oh, okay. Hi, how are you? Um, Hi, we've actually met a few times. I don't expect that you remember me. You're the guy from um, uh, Pellet. Broad, Broad Meadows. I, I, my last time I met you, it was quite funny. You were doing a, you were doing a show in Broad Meadows at TAFE. Um, we're also, we also both know Wiley. Wiley's from Utah. Utah, that's it. Yeah. Wiley. <laughs> oh, he's a funny character. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Um, but, um, yeah, last time, it was quite funny, actually. The last time we met in uh, Broadmeadows, uh, you were doing a show. I, I walked into this massive tent, and uh, I think you were just talking about the Chinese, the two major Chinese languages or something, and you, you, yeah. you said, yeah. is there anybody in this audience that's Chinese? And it was, it was right about that time I'd lost my voice completely. Okay. So I wasn't going to put my hand up, you know, I actually kind of shrunk into the corner because I knew 
I knew people would be pointing me out. And then, yeah, sure enough, the table next to me is like, young man, young man. And I'm like, oh, oh no. And then you, you started saying to me, and I was just like, can you tell him? Can you tell him that I've lost my voice? He's lost his voice. <laughs> it was quite funny. It was quite embarrassing. But um, <laughs> um, what I really wanted to ask you was, I just want to, I just want to move away um, from the political side of it uh, uh, for a little while because you know I would really like to have that conversation with you, you know, at some other point. But what what I'd really like to ask you is, I mean, o over the centuries and over the millennia, oppression has always always caused awesome art, not just music, but you know, let's say you know if we, if we go back to the 80s, you know, like um, political and even musical oppression caused punk. Um, if we move back to before then, you know, like um, the blacks that were uh, oppressed in America, they, they formed jazz and before then even blues, mm. you know what I mean? The slaves in Brazil, you know, away from, away from music now, you know, in Brazil, you know, the, the, the white masters oppressed them and they weren't allowed to do martial arts and so, you know, a certain form of martial arts was born, being capoeira. You know, where do you stand? What do you think about that? I mean, that, that's quite a... You know, it's it's quite a heavy thing to deal with to, to go, okay, there's oppression. However, mm. oppression generally, if we look back through history, causes mm. awesome you'll, things to happen. You'll find you'll find and and this is where this is where it's 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 different for me. It's different for me because I have been politically motivated. Whereas as uh, traditional peoples, traditional Aboriginal people, because they sing in language and because, because they have still connection to culture as such, that their song, line, their song line is sung. And they are singing about country, they are singing about why the, the, the long-necked turtle does what it does, and why, why the, the snake, the pilkati, does what it does, and how it does it and why the rain rains at that certain time of day, and why the, why the winds will create up a storm. So their song line, their singing, is not, is not about politics. It's about country, it's about uh, their connection to country, their lineage to the oldest people in the world, you know? And so their, their, their music, their... And I shouldn't say there, because they are me too. Yeah, I understand. You know what I mean? So, I understand, yeah. So, so my, my form of my song line is, is now with a, with a foreign instrument and with a foreign language. Mm. So, so I am still culturally uh, relevant and culturally um, correct, except I have been pushed into the corner because of politics and this is the only form of language ling lingo that I know. Oh, there's there's no doubt yeah. about that. I, I'm yeah. not questioning that whatsoever. Yeah. What I'm saying is, though, yeah. apart from song content, yeah. I.e., say your lyrics, you know, mm. um, oppression generally in history, outside of you know exclusively Australian history, but you know, mm. all over the world and all contents and and through throughout time, we've been finding that music or art in whatever form generally comes from or generally can come from heavy oppression. You know, even now I think, you know, like we've had a lot of lecturers come in and they're all, a, a lot of them have been saying, you know, it's, this is a turning point in history, you know, like it's, it's really either gonna go one way or another. Mm. And, uh, and that's certainly true, that's a form of oppression, you know, like information oppression, you know, or whatever you wanna call it, mm. you know. I, I just wanna, get an idea of how you feel about that mm. not general not just that's yeah, that, and 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 what i said before is is mu some people create music some people create music for the wrong reason to me music is just not the the uh the resonance of the note of the sound to me it's a it's a it's a it is a, it's it's an expression of who i am and and where i come from and that's it's, I can't explain it more than that. It's, it's who Kutcher Edwards is now. And, 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 it's, and music is just, just a small part of, of, of my existence here. 
education is more, you know, it, I cop it every day. It, racism every day in some form. But I, rather than go and punching somebody in the face, I would rather educate them. So that's, that's, that's what this does for me. Music can educate the uneducated, hopefully. Does that answer your question? Thank you, sir. Sorry, Let me ask you something else. Um, I mean, as uh, obviously, this, you, this is your life, you know, this is what you do, what you love to do. Mm. But um, do you ever get faced with, um, like, how much sort of apathy from a younger generation do you sense? Or do you feel like you're ever pressured creatively to step, you know, uh, I don't know, maybe not be so pointed in some mm. of your messages, you know, as far as making music, because ultimately it's entertainment for people. Mm. Is, it, is, it, is it something that you think about in terms of like, oh, maybe I'm getting too heavy right now with this. Do I need to lighten the mood to do things because, you know. That, that, was, that was a period of time with Blackfire. We were getting too, we were getting too, uh, too serious about the, the, the content, um, about land rights and about um, pollution and about all these other other um, day-to-day problems but that's why that's why I've, uh, this album this new album that I'm bringing out is is more to uh, I think the lyrical content in in what I am singing about is is more to do with universal love um, and I found, I found that when I was, was yeah, and, and when I was back on the Terps, people, people don't want to hear you. People don't want to listen to you. He's blabbing on because he's pissed or stoned off his rocker, you know what I mean? And, and people like Paul Kelly wouldn't come within a bar of me when I was on the Terps. But now, you know, he, 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 he sits... Well, two years ago, three years ago, I got um, he got asked to uh, to write uh, the official theme song for the opening of the new museum here in Melbourne, and uh, it was a twenty thousand dollar commission to write a two piece song, two two minute song, and he said, oh, "Okay, I'll do it," and not knowing that he had to go film a a, a movie in South Australia. And he said, I've double booked, but I've got a guy who I think can do this. And he, and he rang me and said, uh, could you do it, Kutcher? And, uh, and he wouldn't have done that, you know, five years ago if I was back on the, on the slops. No way. But that's, you know, it's, it's about networking and it's about, you know, and, and I, I, have, I have, you know, I suppose I wouldn't be where I am today if it wasn't for the assistance of, of great people like Paul Kelly and people who have stood up for Indigenous issues as well. You know, we have a lot of, we have a lot of musos here who will stand up and, and, and support the, the trees from being logged or, or whatever, but they won't stand up for, for certain issues, but Paul Kelly is one of them. Do yeah. you want to play anything off of... Uh in the CD yeah. to give us a little yeah. taste of uh, oh, well, um, what you've been up to. Um. <laughs> cool, brother. That, you said that was uh, written or recorded in... Uh, that was written uh, with uh, about... Eight, eight of my nephews in uh, one of the maximum security prisons here in Victoria. They were all incarcerated. Incarcerated, yeah. All, all eight of your nephews are incarcerated. Yeah. yeah. For on, on for what sort of? For you know, it's it for all sorts of uh, I suppose crimes, but um, I sort of look at it in a in a uh, in a sense where. To me, to me, every, every law that is passed by this government or governments prior to, uh, before 
or will after invasion 1788 is a false law? Whose law are they breaking in reality? There are thousands upon thousands upon thousands of laws that are broken every day. That laws that were here in Australia prior to Captain Cook coming here. So I look at it in, in a different in a different light, Jeff. Mm -hmm. You know, and and you know, it's hard. It's hard for me to go in there and and uh, see my you know my own people incarcerated for trivial little misdemeanours, you know what I mean? But that's life and, 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 and that's why I do it. I go in there to, uh, to let them know that they are still a part of, of community. You know, they have community out here in the bigger picture, you know? And do, you, um, do, you have a, do you feel a connection to the... the um you know, Caucasian artists from Australia? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, obviously you collaborate, you work with Paul Kelly, he's a dear friend of yours. But, you know, this, you're, you're searching for your, you know, to, to carve your place, mm. establish your own identity I, as yeah, an indigenous I, person, but do you feel like, yeah. you know, the, the, the musical lineage of, of, mm. of white musicians in Australia yeah. is something that you feel, mm. I don't know, in any way a part of, or do you feed off of it? I. I believe that that and and the reality is here in Australia. If I was to bring out, well, I bought I bought this CD out. Uh, what year was it? Two thousand and two, two thousand and three. I went to the record store. I went to the record store in one of the major shopping centres here. And I said, excuse me, and, and not to be egotistical, I went, I said, excuse me, have you got a Kutcher Edwards CD here? And they said, yes, it's in world music. What is more Australian than an Aboriginal person singing about himself or what he has been through or about this country? And to find my <laughs> CD in world music was a bit of a, bit of a kick in the teeth. And that's how hypo hypo hypocritical the, the, the music industry is here. It's, uh, and they don't want to hear. The, the everyday Australian doesn't want to hear about um, the plight of the Aboriginal person. So it's, 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 it's hard for me as, as an Indigenous performer to uh, sell my wares, so to speak. Well, that must be a concern. I mean, do, yeah. do you feel like, um, you know, you, yet, you're gonna yes. you're, you're you're gonna require the support of yeah. of a white record buying audience in yeah. order to yeah. survive? Yeah. It's, Correct. It's a, it's, yeah. it's a it's a but making money doesn't motivate me. Telling the truth does, and that's why I do what I do, and that's why I write about everyday issues. I don't write about things that don't affect me or haven't affected me. So to, to me, to, 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 you know, the, the song that you heard just then, Time Is All I Have, is going on an album which will go to manufacturing probably end of next week. I've got to uh, uh, mix down one more song, master that song, master the whole CD and it'll go to manufacturing. It'll cost me, it'll cost me about $1,700 to go to manufacturing. I'll get probably a thousand CDs made, but I won't, I won't go to a record label. I'll just sell them myself and, and, and distribute them at gigs. But, you know, I don't, I don't wanna be, you know, hell-bent on, on trying to get them distributed to Darwin and, and all around the world. If that happens, that happens. What, what, have, what has your uh, experience been with uh, record labels? Uh, this album here actually was, was signed by Shock, Shock Records. So, and a lot of lip service. A lot of lip service is, is given with the industry here, you know. And... You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not in it 
to, to make you know hundreds of thousands of dollars I just I just want to I just want to get my music to wherever it can go wherever and um, if every student here gives me their address and 20 bucks <laughs> I'll send it to you but yeah yeah and you're constantly uh, performing I'm constantly performing that's, that's I mean I would um, think then if you're if that's how you're primarily res you're reliant on to just dist dist to uh, mm. distribute you know mm. your uh, self pressed mm. self produced copies mm. I would think that would be mm. well that's what I do yeah, in, in, in any in any form you know it's I don't know to sell a thousand CDs in a year you know, that that would be fine you know I, I'm all, all I want to really do is 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 sing sing about who and what I am and where I have come from and you know if if I get the opportunity to to you know go overseas again and and get offered to come to the school in Florida next year I'm only joking Jeff <laughs> <laughs> I'm asking you to take me to the school no <laughs> but you know wherever you know I, I'm not a, I, I just I just want to Keep on doing what I'm doing, and you know, it doesn't you know, it doesn't faze me if nobody, nobody buys a CD. Mm -hmm. The work that I do is more important. Does yeah. anybody uh, else at this point have any anything they want to ask or interject? Yeah, buddy. I'm just gonna wait for the microphone. <laughs> oh, okay. Hi, mate. Um, I just wondered what the, the state of um, uh, indigenous media is here in uh, Melbourne. I live in Sydney. Uh, we've got Koori Radio up there. Um, he's wicked. I just wonder if there's anything Marrickville similar. Marrickville at the old hospital still? Yeah, there? that's it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I just wonder if there's anything like that down here. Pardon? I wondered if there was anything like that down here. There, there's an indigenous radio station called 3KND. Oh. Three cool and deadly. Cool and, cool and being the nation of Aboriginal people here. C U W -L, L I N, but we spell three cool and deadly three K double O L N deadly. But um, that's an indigenous Aboriginal radio station in Preston. But I work, I do radio. I actually came straight from radio to here. I do radio for three C R three commute. Yeah, three C R, which is. Uh, non-indigenous radio station but has had uh, indigenous programmers for the last 27 years so that's who who i um yeah broadcast for yeah cool and i've the last four years i've um produced shows from live from uh <coughs> from four prisons in victoria live to where it had never been done before in Australia and uh, received uh, a human rights award for, for such mm. programs and it was never done before but cool. so yeah you uh, you received a award in 2001 yeah that's correct what was that and I don't how did it make yeah, you feel yeah. I don't I don't um, yeah I don't talk about it because I want people to to see who I am and what I am rather than to see what I have done but um, I was awarded Indigenous Australian of the Year uh, 2001 for for my work that I do uh, not only here in Victoria in Melbourne but around Australia so and I was also in that same year awarded uh, male artist of the year um, funnily enough in the Australian music awards the arias there is no indigenous component uh, in the awards so Aboriginal people started their own awards and, and I was awarded indigenous uh, male indigenous artist of the year so yeah I was curious to know if that was a, a category that it existed from the deadlies yeah the deadlies are created by indigenous people because therefore we are not yeah because we have no uh 
well, in, 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 in the Grammys in, in America, they have soul, they have, have uh, indigenous, you know, uh, Native American sections, they have all these different genres. But in Australia, there is no indigenous component in the Australian Music Awards. And we thought that, that was a slap in the face, so we created our own. Yeah. I don't understand the word indigenous. Indigenous is, is Aboriginal. The oh. word, the, the, the white fella's word for Aboriginal people. Um, but it, it means something, uh, uh, indigenous? Uh, indigenous? Indigenous means uh, original, I don't, I, don't, I don't know the actual, uh, the traditional people of this country. Oh, and I, I didn't, heard, and didn't hear any uh, uh, indigenous music until now uh, in Australia. You have, have you ever heard of a band called Yothi Indy? No, Nothing? they never play on radio or uh, we had no, not any guests playing uh, local music. Okay. I heard uh, country music, but I didn't feel it is really from Australia. So, so where are you going tomorrow? Do you know where you're going tomorrow? No. You don't know? No. I you don't could, tell them I could take you to the, to the Melbourne Museum or, or to the Aboriginal radio station and I could get you some... I, yeah, I would really like to see the, yeah. the music that is made uh, originally yeah. from so Australia. You see, there is, there is traditional, which is uh, with Yadaki, with didgeridoo, and in language, and then there is contemporary Indigenous Oh, it music. is, yeah, because... Yeah. It is only in museum, like it is past, or there is something evolving and continuing uh, with the... Uh, Over here, yeah. Like uh, the Aborigines, they, are, they have perpetuated their culture, or is something from the past that you see in museums? Like yeah, uh, yeah. pyramids in Egypt and uh, the old ancient uh, Egyptian civilization? Yeah. It doesn't resemble at all Egypt well, today. For to example. me, to me, in, in answering this question, what I am singing, what I am singing in, in English, whatever I create, whatever I create as an Aboriginal person... It is the new. Oh. ...is Indigenous music to me, okay. is Aboriginal music. It's being created by an Aboriginal person. It might be in English, it might be with this weird instrument, but to me, what I create, to me, is Aboriginal music. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Okay. Sort of. Are all, all the most, or most of the it's, it's contemporary Aboriginal yeah. people, yeah. Yeah. Uh, they express in your type of music, yeah. which I think is yeah. like uh, folk music. Folk. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have Aboriginal who express in uh, language. Who mix, uh, who mix uh, ancient sound yeah. with uh, English, which is a uh, that's, there's a band, there's a band uh, called Yothi Yindi. Yothi? Yothu Yindi. They were from uh, far north, uh, Northern Territory. Oh, I will take the, the name. Top end of Australia. Okay. The simple fact that I, that I, I, I sort of explain that, that uh, invasion to this country, Australia, uh, the southern states were hit more prominently than, than the top end of Australia. So they still speak ling ling language in their native tongue and it's sing in native tongue okay. and play with the old instruments that are, they've been playing for, for thousands of years. Okay. But down here, because of, uh, uh, of invasion, colonisation, that, that we like I said, we were forced not to speak language. Uh, you cannot learn at school the language? No, it's, oh. it's, it's, all, it's all lost, it's all... It's a decision not to, uh, to lose the language? Yeah, uh, probably if we were to, to, uh, to uh, you know, to, to go to archives in Canberra and to, and to you know, study language, at, at, at university in Canberra where all the archives and all... For, for some unknown reason, all our, all our uh, you know, 
our artefacts, some of our skeletons, uh, some of our people are still in cabinets in, in museums around the world. And the Aborigines. Any, any other, any other, um, any other uh, people around the world who, who they would get buried in a dignified way. Our people are still in cabinets in, in England. You know what I mean? So it's, it's about acknowledging that, 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 you know, culture, to, to us culture is, 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 is more than just an artifact. It's, it's, our, it's our knowledge to, to, to country. It's our, our spirituality. It's our, it's, and to me, because I don't speak lingo, it doesn't mean to say that I am not culturally a right uh, Aboriginal person to talk to. But it's not a dying culture. It is still alive and it can... Yeah, yeah. And there is not... In all different forms. Okay. Yeah. Where, where are you from, brother? I am uh, from Lebanese. Lebanese. Lebanese, yeah. but we have the same uh, type of occupation in yeah. the region. Yeah. But they try to uh, crush the culture. Yeah. Like they don't let people speak or you cannot learn. Uh, so yeah. I thought maybe it's like a sort of apartheid. Like, like, in, like in America, you have Arapaho, you have Sioux, you have, you have all the different clans of Indians and, and they all speak different tongue. But here in Australia, the same thing. All speak different lingo. For, so we're not all the one person. But governments talk to us as if we are the one person. Do you know what I mean? We are all different... Uh, but you, ha of you people. have schools. You have our Aboriginal schools, and not as such. No, oh. we are forced to 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 assimilate. You are forced to assimilate. Yes. Okay. It's crazy. <laughs> it is. I know. Yeah. yeah. Um, got some more questions. Yeah. Good question. Though. Thank you, brother. Hello, my name is Anna. <coughs> Hello. Would you like to play us some traditional music? Would you like to play us some traditional gr music? I would. I and would love. I would love to to sing lingo, but I can't. But do you have? Uh, uh, here, I can sing you a song. Or you or ask it if there's CD? any. If, uh, if you ask it if there's any uh, CD. With the traditional no. language. I am what is called an urbanized Aboriginal. <laughs> yeah. Brother up the back. Moose in the back. And that's that's what I mean, Hannah, is is um, to me what I am creating today, what I have been creating is all is all Aboriginal music to me because it's it comes from this Aboriginal person right here. So because I don't speak in lingo or I don't play a Yadaki, uh, doesn't mean that it's not indigenous. Ten canoes, to be honest, I haven't seen it. Yeah. Uh, I would like to know, uh, is there a place here in Australia where the Aboriginal people are more concentrated, like lots of them? Central Desert, Alice Springs, uh, a town called Alice Springs in, in Northern Territory, where all the, all the clan groups, all the desert people come in from the desert and congregate in, in this place called Alice Springs. And people would say, look at, look at this, this one lot of people, but they're all different na uh, nations, nations of Aboriginal yeah. people. And, and You'll find that you you go around to all the states, all the all the main cities that you will have urban Aboriginal people living living in these. You know, you go to to Sydney and they're in Redfern. You go to to Adelaide and they're they're probably in 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 uh, Port Adelaide. You go to Perth and they're in Free, Fremantle. You know, but we are we are a dispersed people. You know, you walk up the street here in Richmond, you're, you're flat out trying to find an Aboriginal person. 
You know I what just I mean? saw one girl in the club since I got here. Pardon? Uh, I said since I got here, I just saw one Aboriginal girl in uh, in the club. There you go. Uh, I also want to know, uh, is there a place where the, the Aboriginal language is being taught, maybe the kids? So lang language for, for the southern states, and, and Melbourne being a southern state, and, and I suppose Adelaide and uh, Sydney, like I said before, a lot, a lot of our language has, has uh, as, well, it's in hibernation, if you can say that. It's not lost, but, but, but it it's need, needs to be reclaimed and, and got out of uh, uh, textbooks in, in, in museums and, uh, you know, all our possum skin cloaks and all our boomerangs and all our spears and all our bones that are in filing cabinets in, in uh, white fella buildings around the world. Do you know what I mean? So, mm. I, would, I would love, I, I would love to know my own linga. We know, we know generic words, like to, to sit on my ass, the word, the word, uh, the word mum, in in uh, in in lingo here in Melbourne is mum is my ass. I suppose it would. But that that would that would like my brother. My brother has studied genealogy at at uh, Canberra. Langu language. I would love to speak in language. I would love to to uh, sit here and 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 sing every lyric in my native tongue. But pardon. You, I would, well, come, come back in five years. Is that, is that when they're coming back? Come back in five years. Come back in five years and I, would, I will have all my lyrics hopefully interpreted. But that, you know, I, I could get it interpreted into tongue, but would it be mine? Yeah, but th that's what I'm saying. I, c I could probably, like, like the young fella who was sitting here before, I spoke, I, I, I can, I can uh, sing a song in Chinese. I have learned to, to sing uh, this song, a certain song in Chinese, and, it, and it, is, it is a shame. It's shame for me to say that I can sing in Chinese and not my own lingo. I was forced to speak this tongue here. And I, I, it was all I was taught as a child. Uh, are there, uh, sorry, are there any um, like uh, Aboriginal people in maybe politics? Like, in, uh, in, in, are you in, represented in, in the government? In politics, in, yeah. in, in the Australian poli political scene, there have only been two Indigenous uh, politicians. One being uh, S uh, Senator Neville Bonner, he was back in the late 70s. He's now passed. Uh -huh. And there was a guy just recently, um, Aidan Ridgway. He was in the uh, Democrats, I think. And they are the only two, two politicians in, in the history of politics here in Australia. Now, the reality of that is that would the wider Australian community ever sit and let a black man represent them at the round table. I don't think so. But uh, uh, are you still denied of maybe some rights, a certain rights? Are you still denied, I mean, t today? I, I would say yes. We like are deni denied land rights. 
we want, we, you know, we want sustainability of, 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 our, of our, you know, why do we have to prove to the visitor to this country that it is ours? Do you know what I mean? Why do we have to go to the High Court of Australia to, to get a piece of paper to say that this is our country and always was and always will be? It seems hypocritical to me to have to do so, but, you know, at least, at okay. least in, at least in, in, uh, at least in South Africa, the, the majority of people were this colour to turn the tables. Moose is from South Africa. Yeah. yeah. Oh, sweet brother. Well, I suppose I am gonna, I'm going to be involved in a concert on the 27th and 28th of um, October at the Melbourne Concert Hall, where I think it's about 20, 25, 25 songwriters, Indigenous, Aboriginal songwriters, are coming together to, to uh, not to collaborate, but to... Um, perform pieces that have been performed as struggle, as, as freedom songs here in Australia to, to uh, in, in a concert called Black Arm Band and, and to, to give a different, uh, I suppose, genre to the music that we are used to hearing. And, um, and I have written, I've written a piece uh, specifically for this concert, a song called Is This What We Deserve? A song that explains why, why do we deserve the, the deal that we've been dealt. So, in answering that question, um, it, would be, it would be great if, if, if we could get, you know... Um, but I think Hugh Massacella is actually coming over for this concert to perform uh, uh, Free Nelson Mandela, that song, at this concert. So we are, we are starting, we would, and, and we would love, we would love to sit in, in, uh, the, in, in sit, sit with people like Snoop and, 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 musicians of that calibre who are well known right around the country, around the world, the globe, to sit and, and, and maybe collaborate and maybe do stuff like that. But the opportunity is not there. They fly in, do their shows, fly out. We would love, you know, for, for, for people to, to understand the plight when they come to Australia and, and, and sit with us. But they sit, you know, with with the promoters and, and, and whoever, and it's hard. It's hard to even get your foot in the door. I would love to, brother. I would, I would love to do it. I would love to, to see that happen, but, you know. I mean, obviously there's no s simple answer for this, but what, in your estimation, would it require for Aboriginal people to reach, somebody, yeah, the, somebody reach to the equality that is deserved? Um, all it needs is opportunity, really. It, it, it comes back to that. If, if, if Paul didn't come here two weeks ago, Paul Kelly I'm talking about, if Paul Kelly didn't come here two weeks ago to put the thought in the mind 
to talk to Wolf, to get to talk to me. It's about opportunity. It's a, and, 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 and it's about me winning when I get here and when I have got here to, to, to hopefully plant the seed. Drop a, a, a stone in the middle of the pond that the effects will be, will be felt, you know. What is, what is that saying? The butterfly effect. The ripple effect. Yeah. The ripple effect. Yeah. And um, is there anything you want to say sort of, I guess, towards conclusion here mm. about, um, you know, everybody's opportunity here mm. as far as what they're expressing? I mean, everybody's mm. doing their own thing. They're expressing themselves in mm. whatever ways befits them. But, you know, may not be, you know, a political voice, but, yeah. you know, you talk about opportunity, you want to address that at all, yeah. as far as opportunity to be heard yeah. by, by other people? Yeah. Um, I, can I sing a song? And then, and then of it'll explain. Yeah. I, like I said, I lost, I lost my brother last September. Um, September 9th. And I went back, I went back to, to my traditional lands back up in New South Wales and we believe, we believe that, that uh, when somebody passes, whether they're, whether they're two days old or, or 90 years old, that they become ancestors. They become uh, our, our, our spiritual guidance, our ancestors. So I went back to country. I went back to country to to mourn properly, to to uh, let my brother, um, I suppose, feel him properly on on traditional country, spiritual country. And my mother, my mother, in passing in June. Um, she she uh, had fight fought the fight to the very end and uh, passed away. Uh, I got a phone call. Uh, on she passed away on the fifth, the fifth of June. I got a phone call at about eight a.m. that morning and said I had to travel nearly two and a half, uh, three hours to Gippsland to the hospital. And she passed away at 10 o'clock that night. But we waited and waited and waited for the oldest brother to turn off the machine. And um, I, I writ this song that I'm going to sing uh, two days after she passed. And I sung it at her funeral. But... Um, this is what I suppose songwriting is for me. Songwriting for me is more than just words slapped on a bit of paper. It's a it's a um, it's a it's a tribute to my mother for being. If it wasn't for her, um, if it wasn't for her fight against something she believed was wrong, I would have been lost to that assimilation policy which put me in the homes to take me away from her and my father in the first place. I wouldn't be sitting here expressing my knowledge or my, or my uh, belief in knowledge of who and what I am. I would have been lost to, to, to the assimilation policy. So I sing this song in tribute to my mother and any other mother who has had to deal with uh, what she had to deal with. But um, I thank you for the opportunity, guys, but I'll sing this and I've got a gig to go to tonight anyway, so, yeah. What is the title of this, this song? This song is called... Um, my, my nephew, 
uh, my nephew Shannon. Like I said before, I'm one of 12 kids, 12 children. I'm ninth youngest. But my nephew Shannon, uh, he is my second eldest sister's first son. Uh, my, my mother, his grandmother, reared him up since he was a little tiny kid. My sister, because of, I suppose, having to deal with what we had to deal with, couldn't, uh, when you're not taught how to love, or if you haven't, if you haven't been loved, you, you find it hard to give love. And my sister is one of those people who, who rather than, than uh, yeah, she, she gave her son to my grandmother to look after, uh, her son to his grandmother, my mother. And my nephew lent over my mother, um, so he is practically the 13th child. He lent over his nan and when all the machines were turned off and he, he saw that she was struggling to breathe and he, he looked at her and he said, Nan, just go to sleep. We know you're tired, just go to sleep. And that resonated, I remembered that. And uh, the song's called Tired Eyes, but yeah. Uh, you say thanks to Mr. Kutch Edwards. Mm. Sorry, Sorry, man. Appreciate it. If, any, if anybody and has if, any yeah. more if questions that, they want to ask. If that anything? gives you a bit of an idea of who I am and where I come from, I think, you know, I thank you guys. Thank you. The uh, dream time. Dream time. Um, we, we, as Indigenous people, we. It's like uh, to try and explain it. Is have you ever seen that movie? Um, I think Val Kilmer's in it, and he he is uh, he is. It's, it's a movie, but I'm trying to associate how to explain it. He is in, in Native American and he's working for the FBI and he has to go back and try and work out how this, these murders occurred in this, this Indian community. And in, in going back to this, to this indigenous Indian community, he sits and talks with this old uncle, old fella, older uh, Native American fella. And um, and he also talked about shape-shifting, how, how the indigenous American Native people shape-shift. They become, they can become the, the wolf or, or the, the eagle or the, or the crow and they can shape-shift into this, into this, uh, this animal. To us, to explain it in, in when we pass, when we go to you call heaven, you might call it heaven or wherever it is, we go to the dream time and we become the totem that we are given as Aboriginal people. And that is, to try and explain it, that is our belief as, as traditional peoples of this country. We become... We go to the dream time. There is, it's a, trying, to, trying to say we go to heaven or hell. But as Indigenous people, we, we go to the dream time. And we have, we have messages from the other side every day of our lives. It's how we interpret them messages as to how we can deal with... I, I don't want to sound coy or, or 
try and sound as if as if I am uh, bullshitting, you know, talking crap, but there are messages every day in in, in certain things that that uh, the environment does, and one of them one of them is that that when a willy wagtail flashes in front of your face or, or um, annoys you to the point where you've got to shoo it away, that willy wagtail is sending you a message that somebody very close to you has passed. And that has occurred to me a lot lately. So if, if, if that can explain that, that question, I hope it has. The song line, okay. Every, yeah, every... What I am doing here today is my song line. My destiny. So, uh, somebody's song line is, is practically their destiny. There is a reason and a purpose for everything that we do. And, and singing about why the weather is... is the way that it is or why that tree sits where it sits or why the rocks are formed in that way is, is traditional people will sing about that and that is their song line because they are singing of their country, of their way of life. Does that explain that? <laughs> yeah, cool. Well, anyway, guys... Thanks, thanks for, for the opportunity. Up one more time, Peter Edwards, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.